All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back for week number six of Backyard Bookies. I am by myself this week, my co-host Scott. You know, life gets in the way sometimes, so I'm going to have to solo this bad boy. Probably going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. Get these bets in so you people can put some money down if you want to. Going to do quick breakdowns. He sent me over his picks, gave me what his breakdowns are in the games. I got my picks, so should be a nice, quick, short week for everybody. Let's get this thing going here. $20 bet from Scott. We got Liberty and UMass under 47 both these teams are really, really not that good. UMass, honestly, according to Scott, he thinks this might be the worst football team ever. They are just bad offensively. They are bad defensively. So this could be a slog. Liberty, not much better offensively. I like this pick a lot. It's going to be a low-scoring game. 47 is a little scary. That's a low, low score for a college football game. But we've seen it hit before. We'll probably see it hit again. Scott's going with Liberty Games three weeks in a row. He's 0-2, so he's due for a win this week. I like this bet a lot. Under 47 for the Liberty and UMass game. Okay, now for my $20 bet, we're going to move on over to the NFL. The Bears and my Vikings. Yes, this is a team. This is a matchup. Two teams that really kind of struggling a little bit offensively, not getting the points. And the Bears, honestly, one of the worst offenses in football. And the Vikings have just not been Chris, not being able to take advantage of all those offensive weapons. We've seen about 24 points every week from this team. That's a big number for the Bears to try and keep up with. I don't think the Bears are going to be able to keep up with it. These two teams tend to play slogs against each other, usually in Chicago on Monday night. But Kirk Cousins hasn't been great against the Bears since joining the Vikings. I really like this under here. 44 is the number. The Bears are really going to struggle to score points. I mean, they have one of the better running games in the Vikings defense. They give up a million yards, but really not that bad giving up points. They've only given up 10 points in the fourth quarter through four games, which is really, really strong. They don't give up points. They're a bend-don't-break defense, and the Bears tend to make mistakes in critical spots. I like this under here at 44. I'm expecting a nice Vikings win, probably 24-13. to 13. Maybe you get to 24 to 17, it gets a little scary, but I still think this is a nice undercover here at 44. So that's my $20 bet. Vikings Bears under 44 on Sunday. Okay, now for Scott's $40 bet, a game I really, really like here. Utah and UCLA out in the Pac-12, two top 15 teams, I guess top 20 teams. I think UCLA is 18, but UCLA is undefeated. Utah only has that one loss the opening season. These are two really good teams. UCLA's got a really good defense. They stomped Washington last week. The high-powered offense, number one offense, really couldn't move the ball until very late in the game when it was kind of out of reach. They did get it close, but I I, I liked what I saw at UCLA. They play good defense. They have a decent enough offense. Utah has a very committed run game here. They just want to run the football. This is going to shorten this game down really, really quick. It's going to be Good defense, a lot of running games. It's going to be a quick, short game. But watch out for the upset here. Utah might be looking ahead next week to USC. That's the top dogs that they want to knock off. But I like this pick. Scott's $40 bet under 64 and a half. That's a big, big number in this kind of game. I think this is a game in the low 20s, just like Scott does, I'm sure. I'm thinking this is a 24-21 game. That's way too many points, 64 and a half. I don't see these teams scoring a lot of touchdowns. I think this is a field goal exchange. We play good defense. You run the ball short games. It's hard to get to that number if it's a lot of ball control and a lot of punting and a lot of good defenses. So under 64 and a half for UCLA and Utah and probably what is the best matchup this weekend. Okay, for my $40 bet, we're staying in the NFL. Who would have guessed it through four weeks of the season? The Detroit Lions. Yes, the Detroit Lions have the number one scoring offense in the NFL. They have your passing touchdown leader in Jared Goff and your rushing touchdown leader in Jamal Williams. Now, the only problem is they're one in three and the defense has been that bad. I mean, they've given up as many points as they have scored. That just shows you how atrocious this defense has been. But they also struggle on the road. I'm not loving how this team is on the road. But, but, but they are playing the New England Patriots. One of the worst rushing defenses in the NFL. The Lions are going to have a field day running the football. And we have no idea who's playing quarterback for the Patriots this week. Is it going to be Zappy? 
Is McCorkle actually going to play? His ankle is all beat up. We know Brian Hoyer's out because he's a 1,000 years old and has a concussion. So I just have no idea how the Patriots are going to be able to score points. They might slow down this Detroit offense a little bit, but this is still an absolutely elite offense. They can move the football up and down the field. If Belichick's really going to figure out how to take away this run, they could still pass the ball. I really like this Lions team. They are due for a road win. They're getting three points here on the road. I'm taking the Lions, getting three on the road at the Patriots. I think they finally get that road win straight up. So this is my $40 bet this week. Lions plus three at the Patriots. I just love this offense. The Patriots are towards the bottom in run defense. They're not going to be able to stop this offense. And with how limited they are offensively at quarterback and all the other positions, they're just not going to be able to keep up with this team. And it's one in four for the Patriots. I have a feeling for it. Really, really tough start for them. That's my $40 bet. Lions plus three. Hey, over to the Big 12 with Scott. His $60 bet. Probably the two surprising. Did we say first and second place tied for first in the Big 12? We have your TCU Horn Frogs. And don't sleep on them yet, folks. Your Rock Chalk Kansas Jayhawks. Undefeated in 5-0. and old. Both these teams undefeated. This is a great matchup. We got college game day in Lawrence for the first time. But I think TCU here is a real deal team. They play elite defense. Kansas struggled a little bit last week with Iowa State, who plays good defense. They managed to get the win. But, man, this TCU defense is something else. They're really going to be able to slow down this Kansas offense. And Kansas' defense has not been the best part of their team. It's been all about their offense. And Duggar is playing out of his mind at quarterback for TCU. Really the surprising team out of the Big 12 so far this season. I think they have a real chance to win this conference. Scott likes them a lot. Like he said, great defense. Duggan is balling. He is an absolute monster quarterback. The guy can run too. He toasted Oklahoma for 60-yard touchdown pass and a 60-yard run. So they got real dual threat at quarterback there. Like this TCU bet, he's going to swallow the 65 it's just under a touchdown, which is a good number. They win this game by a touchdown. They cover. I think Kansas does play well here. They stay in this game, but I think it overwhelms them in down the stretch. This is a young team. They're brand new to this situation. They're just not quite ready for it. I do think Kansas upsets one of the big dogs in the Big 12, but it's not this week in the TCU Horned Frogs. So Scott's got TCU minus 6.5 against the Kansas Jayhawks for a $60 bet. All right, for my $60 bet this week, we have South Carolina at Kentucky. Man, Kentucky had it. They were my block for an upset. They didn't upset last week. I told you plus seven was great. They lost by three. They were in field goal range to tie that game, and they made a bad, bad play to turn the ball over. We're trying to score the touchdown to win this game. But, hey, you got to rebound and come back up. South Carolina's been terrible. Now, they haven't played a Power 5 opponent the last two weeks. They beat up on Chattanooga and South Carolina State. So, two freebies. But their last two SEC games, they got housed by Georgia. And then they lost to 14 to Arkansas. Arkansas's really taken a step back the last two weeks. Kentucky's still a really good football team. The line's only six here. I love the Wildcats. Minus six at home. They're going to be a good team. They can still move the ball. It's not like Ole Miss is bad. They played really, really bad last week and still only lost by a field goal. I think they play much better this week. They cover the six points. The South Carolina team has not been good in SEC play. Now, maybe they found some confidence beating up on the worst kinds of teams, but I just don't believe it. Things are kind of falling apart for Beamer down there in South Carolina, which is a real shame. Everyone was on this team as a hot up-and-coming team. But, you know, Spencer Rattler not doing anything for them at quarterback to transfer from Oklahoma. So I think this is a nice, easy cover for the Wildcats. Bounce back win. They're still a really good football team. Still have a shot to win the East. You know, you still get your shot at Georgia. Still get Tennessee. So they're not out of the woods yet. I like this Kentucky team all to play for. I think they win comfortably here against South Carolina. So I like Kentucky minus six against the Gamecocks. Okay, now for our underdogs of the week. Yes, yeah, Scott's got his underdog this week. Northwestern plus 310 against Wisconsin. Both these teams are really bad. Northwestern has paid a lot of people a lot of money to come in there and beat the shit out of them. 
It's been a real tough season for them. But Wisconsin is fired. They are uh, a mess. They just fired their head coach, Paul Christ, who's been there forever, winning 80% of his games. It just really is falling apart there in Wisconsin. And Northwestern isn't at home. This gives them a little bit of life here. It's two bad teams. It's the Big Ten. Anything can happen. So Scott likes the Wildcats to finally pick up a dub against a real team, not paying teams to lose against. And I Wisconsin would concern me this week. I definitely think it's concerning. They're all over the place. They started off hot. Then Ohio State imploded them, it looks like. So this is a good spot for an upset here. Northwestern plus 310 against the Badgers. All right, for my upset this week, I got a good one here. I got your Washington State Cougars plus 360 against the USC Trojans. This game has trap game written all over it for USC. They got Utah next week, the big Pac-12 matchup. They could be looking ahead. And USC, honestly, hasn't been that crisp the last two weeks. Really struggled with Oregon State, barely squeaked out a win there. And they weren't that impressive against the Arizona State team, who's 1-4, and four, had fired their head coach. It really kind of, they pulled it away at the end, but it was kind of an ugly game for USC once again. I still don't think this offense is super comfortable in conference play so far. They were great out of conference. They haven't looked super comfortable in conference. And Wazoo, honestly, not a bad football team. They beat up on Cal last week. They really let a game slip away against Oregon. They should have won that game. They're a pretty solid team. They're not the best team in the world. They're not the worst team in the world. But they're just good enough to give USC fits. And you catch USC sleeping this weekend. Plus 360. I like Washington State in this game. They're also getting 13 points. I think that's a juicy number as well. But I'm going to take that money line here with the upsets. Knock off the Trojans and really mess up the Pac-12's chances of getting into the playoffs. So Washington State plus 360 over the Trojans. Okay, it's time for our locks of the week. Oh, oh yeah! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Scott's lock of the week. We got the Red River rivalry up in Dallas, Texas, and Oklahoma. Now, the Sooners come into this game dropping two in a row. It feels like it's an absolute dumpster fire. Brent Venables already on the hot seat. Norman, I think the Oklahoma fans just didn't realize what they had with Lincoln Riley. This defense cannot stop a nosebleed. They told us it was all Lincoln Riley's fault and Venables would get it fixed. Man, they are just bad on the back end. Getting torched against Kansas State, getting torched against TCU. Really, really struggling to stop people. And the Longhorns, they got Quinn Ewers back, the all pre- the savior of the program, Quinn Ewers. 2-2, two and two, they got their quarterback back. This game has a history of being wacky, wild, and massive amounts of points scored. Everyone's all on the Longhorns this week. Do not sleep on the Sooners. But Scott loves the over here, 65 points. There are wacky plays abound. Texas offense is going to be back. Oklahoma cannot stop anybody on defense. And Texas defense has not been as good as they were against the Alabama team. They've given up some points. We saw Tech beat them. I mean, they played West Virginia last weekend. Who the hell cares about that? So this game's got wacky written all over it. I'm expecting turnovers, muff punts, kickoff returns, a lot of crazy scoring. It is a decent number at 65, but this rivalry has a history of being high, high scoring. We hit 70 last year, I believe. Lots of points scored in the Red River rivalry. 11 a.m. kickoff, so Scott's lock of the week. He loves the over of 65 between the Horns and the Sooners. Should be a good game to kick off everybody's afternoon. All right, now for my lock of the week, going to the Big Ten. I've had this team a few times before, never as my lock. I am going to swallow a massive amount of points this weekend. I got the Buckeyes at the Spartans. 27 is the number. This is a huge, huge number. I'm actually a big believer in this Ohio State team. I hate Ohio State most years. I always think they're overrated. I think this is actually one of their better teams. I think this is a good Ohio State team. In Michigan State, really the wheels have fallen off the wagon. They got beat comfortably by Maryland last weekend. They got boat raced by Minnesota the week before. They're really struggling to beat anybody. They've lost three in a row. They lost to Washington a couple weeks ago. It's been getting bad, and Ohio State has been scoring points in the bunches. C.J. Stroud really trying to make a name for himself as the number one quarterback to come out in this draft. 
I think Ohio State covers this number. Michigan State's defense cannot stop a nosebleed. It's very concerning for Mel Tucker here. I think Ohio State gets to the 50 mark. They just got to keep away from the backdoor cover. 27 is a huge number, but Ohio State does a real good job in conference play of covering these big numbers. They blow people out. They keep the scores really at arm's length. So I love the Buckeyes this weekend. My lock of the week, 27 points is a big number, but I'm just a big, big believer in this Ohio State offense. The defense is good enough, and Michigan State really, really seems to be falling apart. So I'm going to take the Buckeyes and the 27. It's a really, really scary number, but I'm all about it. I'm a believer in this Ohio State Buckeyes team. All right, that's going to do it for us this week. I'll put up on the scores right here so you can run through, give those a good little look here. I'm not going to run back down them. We're running out of time. It's going to be a short week for us. I appreciate everybody sticking around. Hopefully, Scott's back. I think we turned this thing around. We're really starting to get a feel for this game. We're playing a lot better ball, picking these games. The lines are getting a little bit tougher since Vegas has really figured out all these teams. But it should be another good week of football. I'm still hoping. I'm still waiting for that week where we both go 5-0. I'm thinking of a strong week this week. Scott will be back next week for week 7. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. Just dealing with me on this short episode. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. What is your favorite bet this weekend? Anybody we didn't talk about or any of the bets we did talk about. Again, like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It really helps the channel out a lot. And we will see you guys next week.